Welcome to the highlights of the final day of the second test at the MCG between Australia and the West Indies. We've had four very good days, hopefully another one in store. We're just bringing you up to date now with what's happened so far in the match. First of all, the Australians made 395 with that partnership between War and Border, 112 and 110 for them, bringing 204 runs. Very, very important in the context of the game. The West Indies, in turn, 233. Excellent innings there from Brian Lara, 52. Keith Arthur in 71 and Jimmy Adams making his debut against Australia, 47. Australia held together yesterday by Mark Taylor, 42, and Damian Martin unbeaten on 67. A very good knock there and a good effort from Merv Hughes down the bottom, 196 all out, and that was a lead of 358. And the West Indians had wiped off 32 of that by Stumps, the not out batsman Simmons, 14, and Richardson, 12. One or two showers in the Melbourne area very early on. But the forecast was good for this final day. Bear in mind that the Australians need to take another nine wickets and West Indies need to make a lot of runs. And even if they make 50 runs per 100 balls, that would still only be 270 in the day with 90 overs scheduled to be bowled. That is a minimum. We join play now in the third over. It's gone on to one for 34. Hughes is the bowler. He's coming in to bowl to Richardson. Your commentators, Mrs. Greg and Laurie. He's a magnificent batsman. He was born in five islands. Took that away between the two men at deep square leg and deep fine leg. That's probably the best hook shot we've seen in this match. It was control, was it straight to the ground. And hit with tremendous timing and power. It's McDermott from the members end. Well, that was a nasty one. He was squ squared up, took off a bit, but Richardson well behind it, but missed the bat, crashed through into the body. well run and 50 comes up for the West Indies that's a good shot looked like it may have been a change of mind but it was very delicate and it's brought to Richie Richardson a boundary with the late cut shades of uh, Alan Kipax there Rich Pretty well hit. Just one bounce and into the boundary, but I don't think Shane Warne would be unhappy to see that shot. 30 to Phil Simmons, 27 to Richie Richardson. 14 overs have been bowled so far. That was the 23 yarder from Merv Hughes. But it's gone a touch more than 23 yards off the bat. That's 23 divided by six. Six threes are eight in. A few left over. Merv can work that out on his way back. Merv delivered it from well behind the crease. It wasn't just to make sure that he didn't bowl a no ball. It was for a bit of variety. Well, it certainly woke up the uh, spectators there in the red seats. Finally, Phil Simmons gets through the 30s and he's done it in spectacular fashion with a six and a four. And Mark Waugh comes on for a bowl at the southern end. And gets the treatment from Phil Simmons. It's going to run away down towards the third man boundary. Might not just make it. Damien Martin doing the chasing. Phil Simmons will still get four. He's just had to run him. gone again that's hit very hard indeed by Phil Simmons this time for sure he won't be having to run those four runs Damian Martin will just be fetching it back a bit of breath to spare this time Phil Simmons is one away from what would be a maiden test match 50 it will be Shane Warne at the members end bowling to Phil Simmons and that's 50 for Phil Simmons that'll be a big relief to Phil Simmons Spent a number of test matches now looking for an elusive 50. Playing currently his 10th test match for the West Indies. All runs here for Richie Richardson. Very good sweep shot. Murph Hughes. Murph Hughes having a bit of divot trouble at deep square leg. 
Might not actually help Murphy's a lot. There could be a bit of pain involved there too. Seemingly a message came out at uh, the latter stage of that last over. I've uh, been to tell him to get his head down and make sure he goes on with it. He went on with it with the one with the red line over the boundary there. And he's got on with that one too. On the back foot very quickly, Richard Richardson. Never slow to get on the hook or the pull. It's got Phil Simmons playing shots. Might be now what uh, brings him undone. And there's another shot. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. That's hit a long, long way. That's gone deep over long off for six more to Phil Simmons. Well, Simmons doesn't mind playing his shots. I'm not sure if that's another zonger. Smash that one through the offside, and despite the fact that they've got off the side over there, he's gone straight through the gap and into the fence for four. One bounce, and that's his 50. So the West Indian captain, with a slightly risky little thick edge there, which bounced way short of the first at fieldsman, has chalked up his 50. Well, that's over the top, and boy, when he hits them, they stay hit. Into the fence she goes, yet another boundary. Oh, when he's bowled him. That has just beaten the outside edge. It also kept a little bit low, but Richie Richardson was looking very comfortable, and all of a sudden, Shane Warner struck. What a wicket this is for Australia. He looked very, very watchful as he played down the line. Let's have another look at it. This ball kept very low indeed. Pitched off stump, kept low and hit off stump. But Richard Richardson goes. The end of a very good partnership for the West Indies is now two for 143. Brian Laura is the new batsman, just four test matches, and what a time to come in. Down the next side. Oh! Standing in his crease, and uh, Whitney just getting a little stirred up. Got in, Boone again, that's probably the best one, because he really hit that, Brian Lara. And David Boone at about six metre mark took that beauty. Another great reflex catch here by David Boone. Brian Lara will be very disappointed. It wasn't necessarily a bad shot. Ball pitched up just moving into him. He's whipped it off his pads. As Bill said, he likes to play his shots. Fortunately, this time he might have hit it well, but he hit it straight at David Boone at that short leg position. And we've seen so many times before from David Boone. He has great reflexes and he's done it again. So Brian Lara is out for four. The West Indies now starting to struggle. Three for 148. Keith Arthur makes his way to the crease. It's well placed. It's in the air. Well fielded. Arthur just back. That would have been out, I think. It was a Damien Martin. Picked it up beautifully on the run. Shy at the stumps and just missed. And by Steve Randall at the southern end. Books, just the single down to Matthews. And that finds a gap when you're running hot, you're running hot. There's a nice educated dab there, a little bit of bounce from Whitney. This is a dangerous third run. And that's good running by his good athlete Simmons. He's uh, big but he's quick. I think that was one of the beauties of uh, Damien Martin's performance yesterday. Perhaps no gremlins in his mind about the Melbourne wicket. Just went out and played his normal game. Yes, beat him. Beautiful piece of work by Healy. That's fine bowling by young Shane Moore. Well supported by Healy. Enticed him down the wicket, beat him in fight and turn. And the West Indies now on the back foot. West Indies in definite trouble now. Keith Arthurton. 
showing some lack of experience here. Not the sort of shot to play in a, in a test match in a tight situation. Alan Border had brought the field up, and I think that was a good move. Try and encourage Keith Arthurton to take some risks if he wanted to. He took the risk. He's paid the ultimate penalty. He's on his way for 13. The West Indies are four for 165. Carl Hooper comes out. Disappointing effort that by Keith Arthur in the end to try and hit the leg spinner out of the ground. It was really a, a slog in the end. He lost control of the bat, tried to hit it too hard. Maybe the fact that Border had the man at long off, he tried to hit this over long on. And the head goes in the air and he's out by a mile. As Hilly has the bails off in a flash. I think Rowan Canai and Richie Richardson might have been waiting for Keith Arthur and when he got in, perhaps not straight away, but at some stage this afternoon there might be a little conversation between the team coach and Keith Arthurton. Taking a bit of a risk with a man at square leg and a man out at deep square leg as well. Nicely played away on the offside. And three runs. Simmons and Cooper. At the southern end, Murph Hughes returns to the attack. Got plenty there because the man has had to come from uh, cover point to retrieve it. They're going to look for four. And we'll get it. Plenty of runs available because Porter has the men up. Warren won't mind if he comes down and hits him over the top. Oh, Carl. Beaten off the pitch by Shane Warren. No timing there for Carl Hooper. And Shane Warren has got in again. This is a big disappointment for all concerned here for the West Indies for Carl Hooper. Didn't get hold of this ball at all well. That's actually quite a good catch from Mike Whitney. Had to make good ground to get to it. There are very bright blue clear skies here at the MCG today. But judged it well. Carl Hooper trying to hit this ball over mid-wicket. Is out for a duck. Daddles accompanies him off the field. West Indies are now 5 for 177. Jimmy Adams played very well in the first innings. He's not on strike at the moment. Phil Simmons is. They crossed with that fateful non-run. Carl Hooper was out. And they'll take a single for that. Shane Warne's been getting a lot of movement in the air, a lot of drift from off stump to leg stump today. Phil Simmons, two away from 100. It'll be one of the best you've seen here at the MCG in many a day. Here's Mo Hughes. There it is. And a very, very nice stroke with which to reach that milestone. Very, very good innings from Phil Simmons. Genuine delight there. A wonderful ovation. He's a lovely man, Phil Simmons. It's been a long time for him to wait for this moment. He's going to treasure that for some time. A very modest character, too. Have no idea where it went. Fielder at cover. He's looking for it on his left-hand side. In fact, it finished up going away on the right. Simmons has picked the gaps extremely well in this innings. Adams beats the well-packed offside field. to Simmons catch and he's hit it straight to David Byrne at mid-wicket and uh, 
A little bit of curve once again, maybe through the air, has defeated Phil Simmons. He can be pleased with his century, but he'll be annoyed at getting out at this stage in the match. Ian Warren does it again. There is the drift in the air, Gwen down the leg side, but the spinning brings it back in towards Phil Simmons, and he just succeeds in pushing it into David Boone's hands. A very, very good innings by Phil Simmons, but he will be disappointed, as Ian Chopper says. Weston is now 6 for 198. David Williams, who got a first ball duck in the first innings, and the situation after two tests, showing that the team that wins the first one certainly hasn't been beaten in the series. It'll be a boundary. 200 comes up with that uh, boundary to Jimmy Adams. It, but I think it's come off his off his back or the back of his arm. Jimmy Adams certainly uh, turned his back on the delivery. And uh, that one's flayed through the offside field there, through the gap, in fact, between the very wide slip and the two square men. Those figures in the first column after the second test. Hence the question mark right down at the bottom. In the air and caught. Straight to Taylor and he has a magnificent pair of hands. That was very low. It went very quickly as well. But the Australians know this ground very well. They're standing up. They know the ball doesn't carry. Have a look at it. Jimmy Adams, the regulation Nick going down. But as Tony said, the wicket keeper and the slip standing a lot closer because they know the nature of the wicket. And what happens as the game gets on Jimmy Adams always looking a bit vulnerable around off stump has gone for 16 the West Indies really in trouble now 7 for 206 Ian Bishop is the new batsman in the air gone what a short extra. Out for a pair. And five wickets to Shane Warne. That was a beautiful bit of bowling. He pitched it up just a little slower, went for the drive, and it went straight to extra cover. Mark Waugh standing there, and this is a bad feeling, I want you to know. A duck in each innings in any test match. It's a long way to go out, all the way out there and back, twice for nothing. Kirtley Ambrose is out there. While uh, we've seen him hit some big hits, I'm afraid uh, he's not in great nick at the moment. He's hit that one. We had a real go at it, didn't uh, hit it off the meat of the bat. It went flying down towards third man, so that'll be four as well. And uh, I think that Dermot may have had a little word in his ear as he went past him because Ambrose did pause and uh, turned his head in his direction. Eight for two, one nine. Shane Warne again, bowling his leg spinners. And straight to slip. That's the end of him. Well bowled Shane Warne. Magnificent bowling that one. Turn, hit the edge, straight to Taylor. And really for him it was a pretty straightforward catch so Shane Warne now has six Shane Warne getting some turn again pitching outside leg stump Ian Bishop trying to smother it as much as possible the bounce and the turn was too much for him thick edge off the shoulder comfortable catch to Mark Taylor Ian Bishop has gone for seven and so are the West Indies at nine for 219 Courtney Walsh replaces Ian Bishop Australia just about to deliver the last rights for the West Indies and Shane Warne is the man of the day. He's taken six wickets for his well and truly his best return in test cricket. Ian Bishop playing forward just turning the bat a little bit trying to smother the spin just enough to get an outside edge. Mark Taylor would be happy if they were all that straightforward at first slip. 
are delighted. Shane Warne and Australian teammates as the West Indies are on the ropes. And that could be the end of the test match. Seven wickets for Shane Warne. Big Merv's got great hands. He won't miss it. And there it is. A great victory for Australia and a tremendous day's work for Shane Warne. His best bowling ever in first class cricket. And what a time to do it. And what a place to do it in front of his own crowd here at the MCG. Congratulations from all around. And so it should be. Shane Warne has one of the stumps under his arm as a memento of one of his great days on the cricket field. Australia go to a 1-0 lead after two test matches here in the five-match series. Shane Warne tosses it up. Courtney Walsh delivers it to Merv Hughes. Big Merv has got big hands and very good hands as well in the forward pocket. Never going to miss one of those. So the Melbourne viewers join us to find out that Big Merv has taken the final catch. Shane Warne has taken seven wickets. Australia has won comfortably here in the second test match at the MCG. Alan Border played his part with a magnificent hundred, as did Mark War. It was that partnership, some superior fielding by the Australians, a much better batting effort, and a fine bowling performance by Shane Warne. Seven for 52 were the bowling figures as he leads the team off. And that catch by Merv Hughes meant the West Indies were out for 219. A tremendous performance from the Australians there after West Indies looked as though they might just have saved it at one stage when Simmons and Richardson were batting. Good innings from Richie Richardson, the skipper. A lovely knock from Phil Simmons, who is one of the nicest of men and thoroughly deserves a century. 110 for him. The others fell away. They were no match for the Australians towards the end. And uh, the bowling figures reflect precisely what happened with the Australians. McDermott won for 66, bowled better than that. Hughes won for 41. He's been a marvel in this match, Merv Hughes. Whitney won for 32. And Shane Warne, 23.2 overs, eight maidens, and seven for 52. Mark Wall bowled his three overs, and Shane Warne was man of the match with one for 65 and seven for 52. A terrific effort from him, something he'll remember for the whole of his life. And uh, so too will the Australians who are in this side which defeated West Indies at the MCG. They have another opportunity coming up, and West Indies could get back to one all in the series in that test match at the SCG, January 2-6. to six. Ticketek for tickets, 02-266-4800. I can assure you that if the cricket in that test match matches the one here at the MCG and the one at the Gabba, then we're in for a real treat for the moment. From the MCG, it's goodbye. This has been another presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports.